Hi boys and girls, Coach Maisonette here. Today we're going to be talking about the skeletal system. Are you ready to learn? We're going to do a do-it-yourself project, making a skeleton out of Q-tips. Here's what you need. You're gonna need dark paper, white paper, about 30 Q-tips, scissors, glue, and a black marker. You can choose either dark blue paper or black construction paper for the base of your project. I'm going to go ahead and use black construction paper, but it really doesn't matter. Use what you have at home. Now we're going to start with the skull. You're going to use your white paper and your black marker. First, you're going to draw a rainbow shape for the top of the skull. Then do a smaller one at the bottom, kind of like a smiley face. And that makes your skull. Now we're gonna create the eyes. You can color them in black. And let's make two holes for the nose. And let's have a happy skeleton today. Now with your scissors, you're gonna take it and cut your skull out. If you need help with this, you can ask an adult for help. A skull or cranium is a set of bones that make up the head. Did you know that your skull is made up of 28 bones? When we are babies, these bones are separated, giving time for our brain to grow. Then, these bones fuse together to form our skull which protects our brain. These joints no longer move. They are called fixed joints. And it's our job to protect our skull that protects our brain. So always wear a helmet when riding your bike or scooter or roller skates. Now we're gonna move on to our collarbone or our clavicle. You will need one Q-tip cut in half to make two clavicles one on the right and one on the left. Be careful when cutting because those Q-tips go flying. This bone is the only long bone that lies horizontally in our body. It helps with the movement of our shoulder. Did you know that this is the most commonly broken bone? Fun fact, I broke my clavicle when I was four years old trying to climb over a baby gate. It was very painful. Next, you will need one Q-tip for the spine or backbone. Even though we're only using one Q-tip, it represents our spine that's made up of 26 small bones that are joined together. These joints allow us to bend, twist, and even do gymnastics. Now we will need four Q-tips to form the rib cage. You will cut each Q-tip in half, making eight bones. Be very careful when cutting those Q-tips because they go flying everywhere. It might be easier to bend the Q-tip back and forth until it breaks in half. Once you have all four of your Q-tips cut in half, we are going to place them next to the spine, underneath the collarbone or the clavicle. See, my Q-tips went flying everywhere, moving my clavicle. Humans actually have 24 ribs or 12 pairs that are all attached to the spine at the back and our sternum in the front. If you notice on the diagram, these bones are curved, allowing the lungs to expand or fill up with air. Ribs are classified as flat bones and have a protective role. They actually protect our heart, lungs, and other organs, which is a very important job. See? We've placed four Q-tips on each side. Next, you will need two Q-tips for the humerus bone or upper arm bone, one on the right and one on the left. The humerus bone is sometimes referred to as the funny bone because the ulnar nerve that curves around the elbow at the end of the humerus bone often gets knocked or hit, causing a funny tingling sensation down the forearm. The humerus helps us perform many daily activities such as eating and lifting objects. Now we need four Q-tips to form the two lower arm bones on each side, two on the right and two on the left. 
These two bones are called your ulna and radius, and they are connected to our humerus, which allows us to bend at the elbow, and connected to our hands, which allows us to twist and bend our wrist. Let's talk about our pelvis. Here, you will need two Q-tips to form this triangular shaped bone. One to lay across, and two halves to form the triangle. The pelvis is located at the lower end of the spine and serves to protect the organs used for digestion and reproduction. The pelvis is a symmetrical bone, which means it's the same on both sides. We are also going to connect our femur in just a moment. Now let's get two Q-tips to form our femur. Did you know that this is the longest and strongest bone in our body? It's where we get our height and it carries our body weight all day long. Just like our upper arms have one strong bone, our upper legs have one strong bone too. Our femur also has a ball and socket joint at the hip which allows for cool moves like kicking, cartwheels, and jumping. Next, you will need four Q-tips to make the lower leg bones called the tibia and fibula. Just like your lower arm has two bones, our lower leg has two bones. They are connected to the femur to form your patella or your knee bone, and they're connected to your ankle which allows for twisting and bending of your foot. Now we're going to use one Q-tip cut in half to make the foot bone. And I know this looks a little odd, but we're going to place that at the bottom, one for each foot, and the end of the Q-tip is going to serve as our metatarsals, or part of our toes. So we already have one for that foot. Now, let's get another Q-tip so that we can make the hands, or our metacarpals. So we're going to cut that Q-tip in half, and we're going to place one on each side to form the hands. And at the end, we can put that in between the ulna and radius. I think it'll fit better. There we go. And the end of that Q-tip is going to serve as one of our metacarpals, which is our fingers. Now let's form the hands. We will need four ends of the Q-tips for each side. Remember, we already have one tip when we place the hand bone. The hand has 27 bones. Each finger has three bones and a thumb has two bones called phalanges. There are five metacarpal bones in our palm and eight carpal bones in our wrist. Our hands help us to do many daily tasks like writing, arts and crafts, video games, and playing. It is important to take care of our hands. After you have the tips of the Q-tips ready, you can place four on each side to attach it to the hand bone that already has the tip. So you should count five tips. Now let's do the other side. You can bring down that hand bone if you need to. Remember that this is just a model. It's not going to look exactly like our skeleton, but let's make sure that we have five tips on each side. There we go. There are our phalanges. Now let's get four Q-tips to represent each of our phalanges or our toes. Remember we already have one on our foot bone, so we're going to connect the remaining four. Your foot also has 26 bones on each side. On our model, we have already placed the Q-tip to represent the foot. Now we need four tips on each side. Our foot has tarsal bones at our ankle, five metatarsal bones at our arch, and five phalanges, just like our hands. We can survive without our toes, but did you know that losing toes could affect the way we walk and balance? Take care of those phalanges. Make sure that when you're cutting, you end up with five phalanges for your foot. I'm missing one. There we go. You can move them up to make them fit. 
And now it's up to you to glue your skeleton down now that we have all of the bones that represent our model. Great job. Have a good time. Can't wait to see your pics.